how was my relationship with my dad or my mom? You know, when was the first time I ever felt? And those relationships yeah, yeah. matter, it, it right? Matters. You realize yeah. really how you were taught and and, and yeah. treated as a child affects yeah. who you are as an adult. Yeah, and sometimes you jump to, you jump ship like I did. Extraordinary people in our community. I would say are positively Milwaukee. I'm excited to have you join us. Podcast. Thanks for stopping by again for another episode of Positively Milwaukee's podcast. It's an opportunity for me to talk with some extraordinary people in our community doing amazing things that I would say are Positively Milwaukee. And today I'm talking with Nancy Yarbrough. <laughs> she is an author, an advocate. She's also the founder of Fresh Start Learning, mm -hmm. which basically is a nonprofit that fills in the gap to support those who are survivors of whether it be human trafficking or domestic violence. Nancy, girl, we go back. We go way back, <laughs> for sure. I, I remember the first time we met, I think it was at a conference, and I was like, hi, 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 I just want to introduce myself, um, because you have such a wealth of knowledge, not only in this lane, but I think most importantly, you're so authentic about it. Yeah. Well, you know, transparency is everything for me. If somebody is hurting, you need to be able to understand where the hurt is coming from, and you can't do that unless you know how to road map out, right? You know that your experience is yours, mm -hmm. but other people's are theirs as well. What I've been teaching lately is the fact that you listen to get an understanding, and then you give answers to only questions that's been asked. And I found that to be one of the most amazing, authentic things that a person can do without finishing your sentence for you. Listen to the whole sentence, right? And I think your bravery in using your life experience yeah. to touch those, um, to make that relationship, mm -hmm. to be an active listener, has really helped you as far as how your organization has grown over the years. Bring me up to speed on how Fresh Start started and okay. where Fresh Start is today. You know, Fresh Start, you know, where new beginnings happen started in my heart. I needed a fresh start. I needed to take off the mask mm -hmm. and started realizing some of those things that I still had trapped. I uh, put in my own Pandora's box, closed the closet and left it there because corporate America was calling. I was able to say, I'm doing this. I finished this. I finished that. But realizing that I had so much trauma, you know, still embedded in me from the prior lifestyle that I was living. So Fresh Start helped me to have a fresh start, which now I offer to other people. And through this brick and mortar, how many years now have we been on Sherman and Center? Sherman and North. Sherman and, it, and North. Sherman okay. and, and it's eight years. Eight years we've been open and available to have women come in for shower hours and laundry days. We have them come in and have uh, something to eat or just to be able to talk, you know, or get resources. We also still have that overnight stay that Condi would have stayed from Friday night till uh, Sunday night, Sunday morning mm -hmm. for them to be able to be matched with longer term kind of how you heal places where it's AODA, whether it is human trafficking, running from a trafficker, or whether it's mental health, whatever it is, we're there for those moments and those really, really tough times. How has your ministry, and I call it a ministry, especially when you're on the street, yeah. using uh, the purposeful purses, yeah. um, been instrumental in you getting connected with these women and these women trusting you yeah. to take the leap and yeah. get off the streets. You know what? One thing about it was is that every woman loves a good purse, right? Yes. So that's one good thing about it. But the other part was all the things that are inside of it, they can buy themselves, but one thing they can't buy is authenticity. So that means that letter of love in there mm -hmm. or the gospel med message that's in there for those lonely nights when you open it up and somebody took the time to write something down to you in affirmation, to be able to say, hey, you know what, you can do this. Us handing that over to them is just our little olive branch of love, like you just said, bridging that gap. You know, how do we do that? By keep showing up. Be a ministry of presence. Keep showing up. And when they're ready, after you've built that trust, they'll come on in. And I think it's transparent for me to say that yeah. because of learning about those purses, we were able to bring a number of employees from TMJ4 to Fresh Start yeah. Learning to write those letters. And I think what was so powerful in that exercise is that we all realized it could be me. And what would I say to me if I needed something to get me going? And wow, someone took the time out to stop and say a good word to me? 
Right on. You know what? Because we are in a day and age of technology where everything seems to be fast, quick, and in a hurry. Mm. It really is really mind-boggling to have somebody say, you know what, I'm going to stop and write not only one, but 20 of them, you know, saying this is actually going to go to somebody. And you go into bed knowing that one day that letter is going to touch somebody else's hand and it's going to touch their heart that could change mm. their lives. That right there is priceless for sure. I'm sure you have a testimony, a few <laughs> testimonies of how those letters have pulled women into Fresh Start Yeah, you know what? A testimony or two. So we'll start with one. So the one thing I did find out was one day I was actually invited out to uh, a Bible study on Atkinson and Mother Friedman, you know, Mm. so she asked me to come out, but she didn't tell me some of the women were going to be there that she had given out the purses to. And when I got there, this lady was actually saying that she held on to that purse uh, and and she wouldn't put her crack pipe in it because that purse was mm-hmm. sacred to her, and that letter made a difference to her. So many other women have come up and told us that though when they were going through hard times, that those letters made a difference. Even when we're pulling up on North Avenue or Lisbon, they'll be like, is my letter in that purse? You know, <laughs> because they look for it. It's just something about that thing that only God can do mm-hmm. that'll really make a difference that money can't buy. And one thing I think is so beautiful about the work that you do is that you see the humanity that is on that street. So many times we hear stories about people, especially those women who, by no will of their own sometimes, have made the choice to live a life on the streets, but we are, they're disregarded in society. How have you been able to try to get more people in the masses to understand these are people too? You know what, when you make it personal, when you make it personal and be transparent about it, it's not always the gore that gets people. Mm-hmm. It's the honesty and truth of it. That is somebody's daughter. That's somebody's son. That is somebody that's gone through life trauma. These things are happening for no cause of their own. These are relational issues, like relationships. I base it on the fact that we've all had relationships. We've all been heartbroken. we all had somebody lie to us. We've all been mm-hmm. somewhere that they are. So because of that, we need to put it right there so you'll get a better understanding. They don't need you to fix them. They need you to understand that there was a choice that was made to take them off the trajectory of life. Mm -hmm. And then that other thing of being honest and truthful with someone helps them get back on the right track when they're ready. And you've also learned in this work, it's not just on Atkinson, it's not just on Lisbon, and it definitely not in just Mil- in Milwaukee County. 72 counties, all 72 counties worldwide. There's a case of trafficking for sure in Wisconsin in all 72 counties. But if you actually go to Arizona or any other, other places where there's the first favorite five in Las Vegas and mm-hmm. all those other places, anytime that there is young ladies or young men under the age of 17 mm-hmm. that actually are being bartered, for sex, for something of value, then that's one of your cases right there. And because social media is so widespread and there's so so much of an allure for that now, mm-hmm. that mostly every young lady or every young man has been actually asked to do something illicit. You know, whether or not they take the bait is something different. That is why we need to keep talking about it. That's why we need to say that your yes is just important as your no. Your mm-hmm. consent goes more than just sex. It is anything that you feel violated in doing that can cause you harm later. And to give those value back, give them their value yeah. back, you have written an amazing book to ha- almost help them out. I love the title, The Exodus, Where New Beginnings Happen. And this is not just about the who. This is also about what you can do. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. You know that. what? What it has is a companion journal that comes along with it. And what we have actually used this to do is to make sure that we highlight the fact that it is something that you stop after reading my journey. It actually allows you to be able to say, okay, let me put pen to paper to think about what she just said. Mm-hmm. How did my life, how was my life affected in the mm-hmm. earlier parts of my life? How was my relationship with my dad or my mom? You know, when was the first time I ever felt... And those relationships yeah, yeah. matter, it, it right? Matters. You realize yeah. really how you were taught and and, and yeah. treated as a child affects yeah. who you are as an adult. Yeah, and sometimes you jump, to, you jump ship like I did. I was a PK girl, right? And my dad was a pastor. Wait, for those who may not know, pastor, PK. Pa- pastor Yarbrough, right? <laughs> so, you know, my dad's a pastor and a minister mm-hmm. at a young age when I first got pulled into the life. Mm-hmm. So I had a foundation that was already laid. So sometimes we can't base it on a household and how I was raised. It's the curiosity of the child. Somebody else is doing it. You decide you want to do it. You don't realize how deep you get in it, mm-hmm. right? Especially if you had those scars that weren't that weren't 
actually all the way healed and you kept picking at it, right? Mm -hmm. So all the bullying that happened to me when I was younger, all the ostracizing, always feeling like I didn't fit, the rape, the all those kind of things, the unwanted touches. And that builds up to the point where after you wore the mask for so long, mm -hmm. somebody sees those vulnerabilities and say, hey, come here, I got a, a more excellent way, right, mm -hmm. for you to feel included. Mm -hmm. So you don't think about the sexual part of it as much as you do the in the part of being included. It's smoke it, and mirrors. Yeah. Until you get deep into it, yeah, right? Yeah, and it's sometimes it's real smoke, right? So you're yeah. smoking weed, smoking crack, and, and doing hair on, and doing peels, and taking lean, or whatever it is that goes along with that culture. So that's another thing as, as well. It's not just a life of sex. It's the lifestyle. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are not familiar with the fact of taking people off the street and put them where? You know, so you took them a away from everything that they've got accustomed to. And if you're talking about high ranking people or you take them out of a mansion and mm -hmm. put them where you take them out, you know, off of Lisbon and put them where. So you're taking them away from everything that they've actually had an opportunity to now trust. Mm -hmm. And now you're telling them on this side, trust me, it takes a lot for people to trust. Even when you know what you were doing wasn't right, at least you knew what to expect. Now you bring me here and tell me all these things about myself I don't believe yet. How long do you think I'm going to stay there if you're not willing to walk with me through it? Talk to me about some of the other um, projects you have with Fresh Start that are helping women who have gotten to another stage. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah you know, living the sober life is something we've been doing for the past free, uh, three years, going on four and what that is, is living outside of the thoughts that you normally have to go back to, you know, the traps of the lifestyle. So you get angry, you want to smoke some weed. You get angry, you want to take a drink. How about you get angry and you journal? How about you call your sponsor? How about you call someone? Mm -hmm. But you get up and take a walk and get some exercise. So we're teaching that out loud. Now that you've gotten to a space where these things don't matter as much, you got away from your dude, your girl, or whoever else had your trap, you learned how to make your own money, you went back to mm -hmm. school, but now all these other things are arising. You know, what about my 401k? What about life insurance? What about this life? Le life, life it, yeah, it's life's our life. In. But all those things. So you realize after being out the life for a significant amount of time, three mm -hmm. to five years, now you're starting to wrestle with things that you didn't mm -hmm. even think exist. So we have to be able to meet people where they are. That word is not cliche. Harm reduction is really what it means. Okay. Reducing harm. And so how many women have graduated <gasps> wow. from the Sober Life program? Yay! About about. 30 now? Wow. So now we have 15 in our new class. It'll be graduating November uh, 9th. So that's going to be a huge celebration. We got a chance to walk with these women since January 2024 to November 9th, 2024. And it was from a sponsorship from the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. And it's so cool that people are realizing to be able to put their money where the work is being done. Right. And so we certainly appreciate that collaboration to be able to serve these women that we're serving. And again, when we hear these numbers, some may say, oh, that's small, that's not enough. But those are 30 more productive citizens in our society who are being helped and learning how to cope emotionally yeah. with their needs. So, and you think about that too, 30 30 women connected to 30 families, connected to their children, connected to their children's children. So when you talk about multiply. the root of thing, it just continues to multiply. That one person changed the whole trajectory of their whole family because of the change that they made. Sometimes it just takes that one person to be able to say, you know what, it is real. I can live a life outside of the life where somebody else that was looking up to you will be able to say, you know what, what role did you take? And then you can actually tell them and help them along the way too. So if we do nothing else, we create leaders, we create servants, right? Mm -hmm. A servant mindset saying if somebody helped me, now I have to pay it forward and help someone else. And a lot of the women hear that, feel yeah. that, and do that? And do that. Yeah, and they end up working with us too. So a lot of times we're able to even hire them on. You know, a lot of a lot of times they don't have any work experience, so we start off where they're passionate at, and that's street outreach. Mm -hmm. You got to take it takes a real woman, a real man to do street outreach when people might spit on you, cuss you out, do mm -hmm. all kind of things, and you know it's not them. It's mm -hmm. the hurt that's in them, mm -hmm. and you just keep showing up, right? You and keep showing up. Keep showing up. And it's the keep keep consistency yeah. that then turns that yeah. heart around to that's receive it. what you're right. giving. The ministry of presence. Don't don't leave me when I push, right? Don't mm -hmm. leave me when I push. That's you a know? hard one. Hey, listen, it works though. It yeah. works. It works. And you have been working it for over a decade. Yeah. Um, how has how has 
the the work changed like you said you, you you work now to meet women where they're at after they get to a certain point to helping them deal with their sobriety but what else is changing in this ever changing world yeah. um, of you addressing the needs of you those know what well, this need? is the episode that we talk about it from the cusp of it and then okay. we have to get in more depth when we talk about it again so that's my shameless plug for coming back right okay. <laughs> but the thing about that is this uh the culture has really changed because a lot of times you don't even have to ask to get in it because people are making it so alluring that they ask you how to get in. Because mm. social media has actually made it so inviting to be on OnlyFans and all these other pages where you can get on and don't have to leave the comforts of your mm. home okay. to do these sexual acts behind the camera and, get paid and still for get it. paid, right? But then also, I find community out on the streets where we serve where there's a whole different kind of setup now where the women are not just getting out the car and running right to the drug house. They're running right to the community of people that are waiting there for them on the said corner, right? So mm -hmm. a couple of guys are there, a couple of girls are there, and they're sharing in the bounty that they just received. In fact, I just saw it the other day driving down the street where they were all huddled around each other in broad daylight, and they were, you know, getting high. Am I shaming them? Absolutely not. I'm just saying people don't understand what community looks like and family and love to that person that has somebody there that got their back. That's why it's so difficult sometimes to leave it. But you're seeing a lot of that now. A lot. A lot. More and more. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, I want to make sure that people understand that, again, your advocacy, it goes beyond street ministry. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to share with me that's up and coming? I'm always like, come on, girl, tell me what's new. <laughs> you know what? Well, you know what's new is this new website that you guys got to check out. We have a whole new facelift on our book. Of course, you can get that on Amazon. But we also have a new website that you can actually take a look at, Nancy's Why, and the why we do the things we do. And that's IamNancyYarbrough.com. So N-A-A-N-C-Y-Y-A-R-B-R-O-U-G-H.com. There's a lot of good information on there, a lot of good connectivity, a lot of things that we're doing new and ever changing because this world continues to change to allow people to believe that it's okay and it is for that moment, but that's don't stay there. One thing I will say about Nancy is she is going to push forward for everybody and for herself. That's right. I love <laughs> how you are so passionate about this. And again, as I said in the beginning, your authenticity is what pulled me towards you the first time we met. And I can't wait to see what else Fresh Start has. That's right, where new, where new beginnings happen. Yes. That's it. Is there someone in your community doing amazing work? An unsung hero or someone just with an inspiring story to uplift us all? Well, I wanna hear from you because I wanna talk to them. Why don't you reach out to me with the email on the screen? And the next time you tune in, they may just be sitting next to me here on the Pause Cast.